Coming to you direct from Silencer Shop Studios, home of the glass case of emotion. Silencershop.com, the easiest way to buy silencers online, period. Stand by for education, enlightenment, enjoyment, and entertainment. He's not here to talk about your feelings. He's not here to say what you want to hear. He's here to say what needs to be said. Ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages, please welcome your host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. Hey, hey, hey. According to my show notes, it's Monday. Yeah, it's pathetic kind of that I have to look at my show notes to figure out what day it is. But sometimes that's uh, how busy we get. Sometimes we get that busy. Sometimes you tell the day by the bottle that you drink. Sometimes when you're alone. I'm going to, no. All no you more. do is think. No more. That actually wasn't too bad. I'm the pimp hand. <laughs> and this nation needs a smack. <laughs> Well, it's true, though, and I have zero SWAT fuel in my veins right now. All I have is my Italian dark roast coffee. That's all I have. That was pretty good. That caught me off guard. Mm. And ladies and gentlemen, you heard it. Write this day down. Take a, take a pencil and write it down. I caught Jared off guard. Every once in a while, it happens. I was just thinking, hey, anybody that thinks he should quit his day job and become a singer... Let us know. Oh, you think I should quit my day job and, like, go be a Walmart greeter? Maybe I could do that. Nah, no. Nah. No? Get your crap and get out! Yeah. That, that's that's my Walmart greeter. At least not at the Walmart here. <laughs> they used to have... that. That's actually is a bit from uh, from Jefffa.com. What's Jeff's last name? Jeff the Puppeteer? Dunham. Dunham.com. Um the the Walter thing when when the Walter guy who did the Walter got a job as a greeter a Walmart greeter and he says get your crap and get out there actually was a guy at our local Walmart several years ago probably five six seven years ago who was almost exactly like that he was an older retired gentleman and they hired him as a greeter and I'm not I don't know if they got like like hiring bonus points because he he needed a job or something but. He was not a greeter. He was very gruff. He was not a pleasant person, but he was the first one that you encountered and the last one you saw as you left the store. You remember that? I don't remember the dude. Oh, he was an old gruff dude. And then you'd come out and if you didn't have, you know, like when you buy dog food or cases of water or things that don't fit in bags and they and they want to see your receipt, you know? Yeah. And he would stick his hand out and say, give me your receipt. That's what he'd say as you're walking out. He'd stick his hand out and say, give me your receipt. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, and that right there, when, when, when someone does that to me, even if, if I'm in a good mood, that instantly puts me in a, I want to punch you in the face mood. Uh, so, oh, I'm a thief now. I'm sorry that there are so many thieves here that you have to behave in that fashion, but I'm not one of them. So don't trick me like that. Yeah, he didn't last. He lasted a lot longer than I thought he would. Uh, but he's gone now. He's gone now. I think he actually he walks down Woolmarket Road screaming at traffic now. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> he was out there today, old yeller, yeah. yelling at traffic, screaming at cars as they drove by. I've never got to have a conversation with him, but I would like to try. If I ever see him, make I'm not sure that you down use the road. exercise the tooler drill. Yeah, the twenty-one foot roll. Though. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, he that dude's always nicely dressed and oh yeah, he's like dressed he's nicely. He doesn't something. look like a bum. I mean, he has a house and yeah. and uh, access to a shower and and clean clothes and you know stuff like that. But he he was on Woolmarket Road, just yelling at cars as they drove by, and and he doesn't yell friendly like "Hey, how you doing, neighbor?" He has like the scowly, mean, scream at traffic kind of thing going. Your brother and I were talking about that. We're like, there's got to be like some kind of a thing. And I, I'm sure there's probably one person in the audience. Oh, that's – and they're like, that's phase two Alzheimer's or something That when you feel the need to scream at cars. Not at humans necessarily, but at cars. And I feel, I feel for that guy. I'm afraid – this is on a serious note. I saw him walking down I-110, down the interstate one day. And, 110 or 10? No, I'm sorry, 10. I-10. I saw him walking down the interstate 
Well, 110 is the interstate, too. But, and I thought, because he walks down the side roads, you know, like the local, you know, side roads and stuff. But you're not allowed to just have, you know, pedestrian traffic. And here's what I'm afraid. Someday he's going to be walking down the interstate and a sheriff's deputy or a trooper is going to burl up on him. And they're gonna be like, hey, buddy, what's going on? And he's going to go, blah, blah, blah. And he's going to scream at him. They're like, whoa, stop the presses. We have an emotionally disturbed person here. Uh, and those people are hard to deal with. When I was a police officer, I got behind, I, I had, uh, got behind a person, and I was in town. And they, they zipped on past me at almost 50 miles an hour, and the speed limit was 35. And I'm like, holy mother of what, – what, what do they say in Super Troopers? Mother of God. <laughs> and so I get out behind this guy, turn my lights and sirens on, and I'm behind him. And he's cruising along, 55 miles an hour. Won't stop. Just, and I'm like, holy, what the farfic nugan, right? And so uh, I, I was a mile out of town into the county. And I'm on the radio with dispatch. I'm calling in the plate number. I'm like, I don't know what's going on here. This dude just like zip by me, like at you know going 50 and a 35. I'm out on the inter- on the highway, the state highway, and I'm behind him with my light sirens. I'm doing the uh, 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 you know the air horn thing, not stopping. So finally, this is what I did. I whipped around, got in front of him, and started slowing down. Right. Dude, you're not going to believe what this guy did. Did he pass you? He tried to pass me. <laughs> I actually had to do like a pit maneuver and block this guy in. Well, not really a pit pit maneuver, but I had to block him in. I get out, and it was an, an octogenarian. And he's just like, what? It's like, like I, don't, I don't have time for you. I'm like, dude, d- d- dude, what? And you're like, come on, Paul, you're just being a mean guy. I'm like, no. When you're in a in a, a like residential business type area and you're doing fifty, you can't if if a kid on a bike, you know, like come out of a side street, there's no way you could stop. And having lived in Florida where, you know, there was a horrible thing in Florida, I think you probably remember, Jared, or maybe you don't. Uh, you probably remember the story you were a kid, where an octogenarian just like was going through a residential neighborhood and plowed over some garbage cans. And just drove on home. It wasn't garbage cans. It was three kids. Holy cow. Yeah. Just plowed right over them. And, Did uh, the kids survive? Just, no, they all died. Oh, man. He killed them. Three kids. He just <laughs> ran them over and drove home. They got descriptions of the vehicle. People were, like, flipping out. And they they, they went to the house and, and they, you know, knocked on the door. And they're like, hey, Mr. McGillicuddy, you know, were you involved in a in a crash or whatever, hit and run? And, I, and he's like, no. Oh, yeah, I hit some garbage cans on the way home, I think, but that was it. They're like, no, all the blood and stuff that's all over your car, that's from human pe- human beings. You need to come with us. Oh, uh, so sometimes sometimes grandpa and grandma don't need to drive anymore. I guess that's that's the moral of that story. So Some grandpas and grandmas know that, and they don't, but some don't care. Some are just going to keep on doing it, and it's tough. It's difficult, and I didn't mean to bring you down, uh, but that's the way it well, is. Bring us back up, DJ. Bring us back up, DJ. Well, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to sip some coffee, and I'm going to let somebody else talk for a second. Attention, new listeners. We produced a free training video series called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. We want you to have access to this life-saving information. Get instant access now at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of those questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Woo! You want to know what I was doing over here? Yeah, I don't know what you're doing. Um, you got the smirk on your face. Because <laughs> right before we, I came into the studio, I had one of those those like oatmeal breakfast bars. You know, those oat breakfast yeah. bars. And apparently I did like a or a buh or a something. And a little tiny piece of oatmeal got caught on the pop filter. <laughs> so I took a business card and I flicked it off. Oh, that's what you're doing. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? You thought it was a pop filter. It's actually a uh, a crumb filter. That's yeah. what it's from. Uh, 
motivational moment for troops overseas. All right. I know I promised to do this. And uh, last time, last week, you did the oath of enlistment, which is you break it or not. Mm. And then I, I, did, or I told are you. Are you going to violate it or not or whatever? It yeah. Was. I would suggest that you don't. Oh, motivational moment for troops overseas. You're not alone, and it'll and it's going to end eventually. <laughs> <laughs> eventually, it's going to end. No, uh, seriously. What was, would you say to a young Marine that was on his first deployment? Mm, wrap that rascal. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, no, but yeah, that was easy. You know, you know how they prevented STD when I was in the, the infantry. They sent you out to live in a desert, <laughs> and. and then that was it. You didn't have to worry about it because no. it was a sex-free environment. <laughs> yeah, I, when, we, when we were in there, that, that's a, the weirdness about the world is we were living out in the uh, out in the middle of the desert underneath camouflage nets and, and so forth. And uh, we would get like three-week-old Time magazines and, uh, you know, the cover, women in combat, you know, are women ready to serve? And, and and I'd read these articles about supposedly all these women deployed to the Operation Desert Storm and Shield or whatever. I'm like, I don't know what these people are talking about, but I don't see any. <laughs> I haven't seen any for months. I don't know what they're talking about. No, we actually literally went months without outside contact. Um, but that's what you do. You mean you didn't have, like, Skype or Facebook? No, I didn't have Skype or Facebook, <laughs> and, uh, you know, my iPhone died. And, you didn't and have any distractions? The battery on my iPhone died, like, the first day, So I, I, and I didn't have anywhere to plug it in. I tried plugging it into the sand. People were like, well, plug it into a cactus. <laughs> no, there were no, there's, like, none of that. The, the Arabian Desert is not like the Mojave, where there's, like, cactus and scrub brush and, you know, all those different things, Joshua trees. There's... Nothing. Every once in a while, you come across some of this weird grass stuff. But I can tell you this. If you're – now, actually, on, on a serious note, uh, we just had two uh, Navy Seabees here uh, on the Gulf Coast commit suicide. And I don't know why. I don't know their backstories. I just know that it happened. It's not that bad. It's eventually going to end. And if you'd have taken my advice and not gotten married, you probably wouldn't want to – oh, don't say that. Actually, uh, one of the guys – now, nah, I'm not going to get into it because it will depress people. But here's the deal. It will end. Life will get better, and you will get to go home. All right? And, and I know it seems like you're, you're playing Groundhog Day and, and the, you know, it's over and over and over again. But uh, when – are you going to sing that song, too? No, I'm not going to sing There's no Groundhog Day song. No, there's an over and over again song. I don't know. I don't even that. know where it's from or who sang it, but it's... I've probably it. something like pop culture metro that I wouldn't know, You're but you would. You're probably right, yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> if you do four, let's say you're in the military right now, you're going to do four, you do eight, you do whatever. Um, listen to me, brothers and sisters. Uh, and in 10, 20 years... You're going to look back at the times that you spent in the if, – if you did it right, you're going to look back at those times. And you're not going to remember the crappy times. You're not going to remember the, the, the misery. Or if you do remember the misery, you'll look back at it with pride uh, that you got through it. So buck up, little camper. It'll be over soon. All right, it is Monday, and what does that mean? Well, it means we're going to give away some SWAT fuel because that's what we want to do. Uh, we like to give away SWAT fuel. And how can you get your free 9mm plus P? Well, you can use the Studio the Gun mobile app uh, if you're doing that, and you just tap the little button, and it calls, and a lovely voice prompt will tell you to leave your question. Now, remember this. A question is one sentence with a question mark at the end, with a possible follow-up sentence. A question is not a 200-word statement, just FYI. <laughs> and and if, you're, you're, uh, if your call-in lasts two or three minutes, you're probably not going to get to the top of the list, just saying. But if you get to the top of the list and you're the lucky winner, guess what you get? You get 9mm plus P, a free bottle of it, and Jared is going to tell you, well, go ahead and play it, and then afterwards you can remind them what they need to do to get their free stuff. Hi, 
This is Nick calling from Kentucky. I carry an IWI Jericho every waking moment in a crossbreed Super Tuck Deluxe. I also do electrical and mechanical work for a living, which means working outside in the heat, and it's hot. I've noticed lately that when I remove my gun from my holster at night, it's still wet with the day's sweat, and it's starting to rust the slide of my gun. Obviously, a Duraco project is in my future, but do you guys have any tips or tricks that could help avoid this kind of issue other than disarming myself while working? Thanks, and keep up the awesome work. Got any tips? I was just about to say that. <laughs> you were just about to say, you got any tips? You shredded like a julienne salad. All right, I got some tips. Yeah, A, number one, uh, if especially if you are in the South, uh, but anywhere in the United States of America now, it's hot and just... It's hot in the summer. Must be all that global warming, huh? It's never been hot in the summer before. No, but seriously, if you're going to buy a Bruce Jenner commemorative, also known as the Super Tuck Deluxe, do yourself a favor. Spend the extra cash. Uh, I don't know what it is now, 10 or $15. It doesn't matter. It's worth it. It's a value. Eat at Burger King one time less this week, and you can afford the horse hide. Get the horse hide back. The horse hide backing is thicker, and it's more resilient. And it is a better sweat guard than the cowhide. Now, if you are a serious sweating dude and you're just going to sweat and sweat and sweat and sweat, you're going to eventually end up with sweat in your holster and it's going to soak through. And that's just the way it is. It, sorry, that's the way the, way the world works. But I will tell you this. The good news is, number one, if you buy uh, a good quality leather product, especially if it's horse hide, What's going to happen, and I'm sure that our caller is experiencing this, is that the backing will conform to the holster. I'm sorry, to the gun. And so when you pull it out, there will be a perfect impression of it. That's good. That's a good thing. You want that to fit. And also, it will mold to the, the shape of your body. Now, when you take your holster out at night, put it kydex pocket down. I know a lot of you... OCD people like Jared over there. Hey, OCD, when you take your crossbreed off, do you put it pocket down or do you put leather down? Uh, I mix it up. Sometimes I, does it, does I don't it mess have, with your OCD. If I you don't put have it, a system there, but yeah. If you put it leather, if you put Did it you know leather that it up. Would be CDO if I was actually OCD because that's alphabetical order. Yeah. Yeah. So there's yeah, that. There you go. But seriously, you know, take it out, set it down. And let it dry overnight, and it's going to be perfectly molded to you. Now, as far as the gun is concerned, uh, I'm, I took this question because I wanted to address the, if you've taken the opportunity to become a, well, a gun carrier, a legitimate every single day gun carrier, you might think, well, I haven't been to the range lately, so my gun's not dirty. It is dirty. If you haven't pulled out your gun, unloaded it, and inspected it in a month, you're going to find a lot of dust and clothing lint and dead skin and all kinds of stuff in, on, and around your gun, even though you didn't take it. If you have a pocket gun and you have not pulled it out of your uh, Tough Products pocket roo lately and looked at it, here's what I'm going to tell you, brother and sisters. There's going to be a ton of lint in that thing. So step number one, firearms maintenance. Clear the guns, take all the ammunition out of them, and then after you do that, get yourself the, uh, the basic frog lube kit, clean the gun, frog lube it, wipe it down. Uh, now, there's, there's light and heavy lubrication. What is light lubrication? Light lubrication doesn't bead or drip. Heavy lubrication does bead or drip. You don't want heavy lubrication on your gun. You want light lubrication. Uh, but yeah, if you if you have blue steel guns and even stainless steel pair guns, I got a silver gun. It's stainless steel. It'll never rust. Uh, it's more it's rust resistant. Stainless steel will rust. You're like, no, it won't, Paul. Like, yeah, it will. It will. Basic normal stainless steel will rust. Now it takes a lot more to make it rust, and it's much more resilient. But eventually it will. So you want to just wipe it down. And I'm telling you, this is a good opportunity. If you're listening to me right now, be honest with yourself. You're like, mm, yeah, I carry that thing every day, but I haven't shot it in about a month or two, and I haven't cleaned it in, well, I cleaned it last time I went to the range. 
Okay. Unload that sucker, clean it, put some frog lube on it, and drive on, brothers and sisters. And when you when you do decide to uh, to Duracoat your gun, you need to get all whether it's frog lube or Hoppy's number nine or Break Free or whatever you call. I don't care. You need to get all that stuff off of there. All right, Jared. So, real quick. Real quick. Step one: <clears throat> clear the gun. Step two: disassemble the gun. Step three: clean with frog lube solvent. Step four: apply the frog lube lubrication. Step five: reassemble gun. Step six: load, load gun. It. Put back on your body. Drive on. Okay. There you go. All right. Remind him what he needs to do to get his free nine mil plus P. I was going to say call in to 682. That's not what you do. You already did <laughs> no, that. No, no, you already did that. Yeah, just email Alex, A-L-E-X, at studentofthegun.com. Send her your name, your mailing address, your phone number, and your email typed into the body, please. Uh, you probably know the drill. It sounds like you've been listening for a little while now. And if you weren't the winner, fear not, you can go to the SWATfuelStore.com. And if you haven't gone there lately, you really should because they just updated the store and made it even easier for you. Uh, but when you check out, use the promo code SOTG two zero one fiber, and you're going to save yourself some money, and you're welcome. All right, Brownells. If you go to Brownells, guess what you can buy there? Well, you can buy ammo and magazines, and holsters, and scopes, and sights, and optics, and rings, and parts, and screws, and and everything you want. But you can also pick up Frog Lube, or you can just go to froglube.com, and you can pick up Duracoat there, or you can go to LowerCustomWeaponry.com. Did you realize that we banged out, like, most of our sponsors in that? Because our guy said that oh, he yeah. used the Super Tuck. Yeah. Woo! Sorry, right, there's that. So, check, block. And Century Arms, the sweetest smelling arms maker in the U.S. of A. A. I feel like we should have a, a special theme song for this. And I, I, I don't know if we've ever had an anim- when animals attack theme song. But here's what I'm going to tell you. Breaking news. Uh, The Denver... Now, I have my thing... My thing. I have my laptop muted here so that it doesn't come up. But what I want you to do in this story, Mountain Lion Attacks Boy in Colorado. And he actually... This happened uh, in Aspen or actually outside of Aspen, Colorado. uh, Very near to where we lived when Jared was just a little crumb cruncher. When Jared was only three years old, he was just a widow guy. We lived in a city called Basalt, and if you know your Colorado geography, Basalt is on the highway that leads to Aspen, uh, between Glenwood Springs and Aspen. Uh, so that's a little, little Colorado geography for you hippies out there. But it's up in the mountains. It's beautiful. Uh, it's one of those places that's super beautiful, but it's kind of hard to live there because the the uh, the business opportunities are limited unless you're in the tourist industry. If you're in the tourist industry, it's great. Uh, but if you're not, it's, re- it's rather limited. In this news story... Did you know that we live in 2016 now? Mm, yeah, I do. I'm, I'm aware of that. But we weren't. It wasn't 2016 when we were living there when you were yeah, three no. years old. And actually in... That's why we don't live there now. <laughs> I was going to say, even in 2016, you can still have limited business opportunities in certain areas like that. Yeah. So, all right, Colorado Parks and Wildlife confirms mountain lion that attacked... Five-year-old in Aspen was euthanized. And you for those of you that went to public school, uh, that means shot dead killed. Uh, means no longer uh, alive. Means room temperature. Yeah, what I'd like you to do, Jared, is I'd like you to go ahead and play the news story that's embedded. Because I think it's important for the audience to hear from someone else's, well, from someone else's lips, exactly what they're super concerned with. Well, the, in Colorado. The video is um, not loading because this site sucks. Oh, does it suck yeah, really bad? Yeah, they don't bad? know how to do video embedding, apparently. Oh, well, that's too bad. So, well, I, I guess I can just do it on my own here. All right. And, and, and that is sad that a lot of these, that student of the gun, the little tiny operation that we are, that quite often our stuff works better than these professional news organizations. <laughs> All right, Denver. That's the dateline, Denver. And the source is thedenverchannel.com. That's also Channel 7. Denver, Colorado Parks and Wildlife has confirmed one of the two mountain lions euthanized in Aspen Friday had attacked a young boy. You're like, I'm glad that they confirmed that. Well, how did they confirm that? 
Uh, CPAW. Oh, do you see how they? It's CPAW. I think I think I got it. If you, you think want me you got to play. it, okay. If if it'll work, let our audience listen to it because I'm sure they're excited. The last hour and a half, we learned the wildlife officials did kill the mountain lion that attacked that little boy. How did they know they had the right animal? Well, tonight, Denver 7 reporter Russell Haythorn has been looking into that process. Russell? Yeah, and it was DNA evidence sent up to the Wyoming Game and Fish Laboratory, and that linked the lion to the boy. The boy is now here tonight at Children's Hospital. His family saying today in a brief statement, he is doing better. Here's a photo from the Aspen Times of one of the lions killed by wildlife officials. We have to remove animals that are going to injure people. Um, whether or not people like it, it's appropriate. Jennifer Churchill with Colorado Parks and Wildlife says officers took down two lions in this general area near Aspen where the boy was attacked. A uh, police officer and forest service ranger who arrived on scene first uh, killed a lion on scene. And then we uh, were investigating the area. 2 a.m. that night, we found another lion about 600 yards from where the attack happened. And we removed that lion as well. The lions were taken to a lab in Fort Collins for necropsies, where lab workers determined the lions were not diseased and did not have rabies or the plague. Samples can be taken for testing for infectious agents, viruses, bacteria. Dr. Gary Mason of CSU says in cases like this, pathologists connect the lion to the victim. DNA evidence would be the thing. Um, so that would be a swab between the teeth um, of the claws. Churchill praised the mother who reportedly pried the lion's jaws open to save her son before he was airlifted here to Children's Hospital in Denver. She did everything right. Um, you know, no one expects anything like this to ever happen. And then, until that happens to you, you don't know how you're going to respond. Yeah, All right. So the, the wow. stuff that you guys heard, the little like skips there, that was actually happening because of their website sucks so bad. It wasn't your your device. Don't worry. It was because the the Denver Channel number seven's website sucks so bad <laughs> they can't stream a video. Okay. Oh, wow. Wow. There's so many things to talk about in this story. A number one. Oh, let's go into the actual. Let's go into the actual attack because did you notice, Jared, that they spent the vast majority of the time convincing or explaining to the the general viewing public that you do need to do this yeah that it is important and that it's okay to shoot the lions the mountain lions do you folks i know a lot of you guys out there live in places where there are not mountain lions or pumas or cougars or whatever you want to call them uh but they're really super dangerous they're kind of like an apex predator and uh they make generally no noise before they attacked. What happened here? All right, let's go to the Friday night attack. All right. The lion attack happened at a home in a community of Lower Woody Creek, which is right near Aspen. Uh, this is very good. Uh, this is very good work by everyone involved," said Seapaw Northwest Regional Manager Ron Velarde, or Velarde. I'm not sure. Uh, from the time the incident to the verification of the right lion was that the right lion was killed, there was a lot of hard work going into the background of the very professional people to get it done in a timely manner. So they were like really super, super, super concerned about the DNA testing and the identify. It's almost like they wanted to arrest the lions and put them on trial or something. Um, so okay, well let's let's get in the. Okay, the mother of the boy was inside the home on Lower River Road when she heard her son screaming on Friday. When she went to see what was happening, she found the mountain lion on top of her son. The woman ran to her son and was able to physically free him from the wild cat. The newly released 911 calls, the father is heard telling the dispatcher that he's driving from Lower River Road to the emergency room with my five-year-old that just got attacked by a mountain lion. All right, is he in the car with you? Yes. The kid has lacerations. I'm on my way to Valley Hospital. I wanted to give you a heads up and let you know to be ready, so you're ready. The boy and his mother were both went to the hospital after the attack. Pitkin County, uh, that's where we used to live, Jared. We lived in Pitkin County. Sheriff deputy called the mother a hero for charging the animal, yanking its paws, and prying open its jaws. 
Uh, the mountain lion, officials estimate the mountain lions were between seven and nine months old and approximately 40 pounds each. This is where that kid super lucked out because if that was a fully, and the mom too, and the dad, if that was a fully grown adult mountain lion, she probably would not have been able to pry open its jaws. Uh, and you're like, only 40 pounds? My dog's 40 pounds. Yeah, that's the funny thing, Jared, is people's like, when you look at your cat, your cat's like, what, five pounds? Or if it's a fat cat, it's 10 pounds. Uh, and you look at your 40 pound dog, you're like, eh, it's a 40 pound dog. A 40 or a 50 pound cat is yeah. a killing machine. A, an 80 pound cat is a monstrous killing machine. Those of you that have cats, they're probably, what, 10 pounds? Yeah, a, a fat cat. Yeah. A fat cat. A regular cat's probably maybe five. So just think about when you're playing with your cat and it, like, lets its nails come out and it scratches you. It's a freaking 10-pound cat, max. Yeah, max. And it still hurts. fat cat. Yeah, if it was 40, 50, 80 pounds. Um, several things. A, number one. If your kid was ever attacked by an animal or a human or a anything and you needed to treat their wounds, could you do it? Would you have the skill and ability and tools to do a real quick, fast, in a hurry wound treatment? Or would you just have to wait? This guy did the right thing. I'm telling you what. Um, if, if you can get to the hospital, get to the hospital. You're like, oh, come on, Paul. Wait for the professionals. Well, if you're not going to treat them, if you're going to treat them, if you're going to do immediate first aid, bandage them, tourniquet them, do airway ma- maintenance and all that, great. Wait for the ambulance. If you're not going to do that, move them out because they're losing blood. Get them moving. Okay. Uh, number two, Jared, is it paranoid to like always have a gun on you when you're dressed? Um, no, I would say no. That's my theory. Some people would tell you that. I'm at home. I'm in my safe zone. I don't need to carry a gun. And I'm not, a, I'm not a crazy, paranoid kook like you. I don't think I should always have a gun on me. Or maybe you should. I don't know. Just saying. Folks, uh, the one thing I wanted to get drive home from this is it almost seemed like th- the main bend of the story or the main focus of the news story, it wasn't how to protect your children how to save a life, how to defend yourself. It was sometimes and we have to shoot animals, and it was necessary. But don't worry, PETA and animal lovers. We did, they freaking sent DNA samples to Wyoming. Holy crap. How about, there's a lion in a residential area. You know, I love animals. I really do. They're tasty and and they're delicious, and sometimes you need to shoot them before you eat them. But my point is this: you know, all right, snakes. I'll give you I'll give you a great example. Uh, down here in the the glorious state of Mississippi, we have lots of poisonous snakes, and there are, there's a you know big wooded area that is adjacent to our home. You know what I don't do? I don't go way back into the knee deep grass and scrub and jungleness and hunt for snakes. I don't go back there and look for them. If they want to live back there, rock on. Cool. They can live back there. But when they come up and they break the threshold, when they're on the front porch, the back porch, uh, you know, up by the house, they they just screwed up. That's poisonous snakes. Now, you know, non-poisonous snakes get to hang around. They're all right. Mountain lions, they want to hang out in the mountains. They want to eat deer, you know, eat rabbits, eat whatever. Cool. They come down and they come into the residential neighborhood. Sorry, bro. They got to go. They got to go. Bears, alligators, you name it. They got to go. Uh, dominion over this world. How? And this comes right on the heels of the alligator attack in Florida, and which is really sad. Uh, he, you know, a two-year-old kid was was grabbed by an alligator, drug underneath, and drowned. And, and some lunatics in our world, some people who don't, don't understand anything about anything are like, we, we posted the picture of, from the Sun Herald. They're, that's just like horrible fish wrap. I don't know what kind of artards are working at the Sun Herald. But the lead story is, uh, uh, what from last week is, gators don't want to eat you. 
And, and they base that upon the fact that when they found the kid, this little two-year-old's body, it wasn't, it hadn't been consumed by the alligator. And so they say, well, that proves it. First of all, if you had a brain or if you, if you studied, you would know that that's not how alligators eat. Heck, if you watch Crocodile Dundee, uh, alligators very rarely eat fresh meat. Alligators kill it. They stuff it in what they call their meat locker up underneath a log or, you know, something like or a big rock or whatever. And then they come back a couple of days later after the corpse, after whatever they've killed and drowned, after it's, you know, tender. That's how they operate. And it's so the fact that they found this kid's body uneaten does not prove that alligators don't want to eat you. Yes, they do. You know what alligators want to eat, Jared? Uh, food. Meat, and anything anything, anything that, that can fit in their mouth. It's like, okay, this is how big my mouth is. Can I fit that in my mouth? I want to eat that. And do even you, not, they really enjoy hippos. Did you know that, that alligators uh, are, carni- are not carnivorous? They're uh, cannibals. They will actually, if they get hungry enough, they will eat other alligators. Now, it's rare, but it has happened. Uh, and they love dogs. Now, I read in here, and I'm going to try and find it. It says the boy's father bounded into the lagoon and to wrestle his son from the animal's steel trap grasp, but he lost the battle. How many of you guys think that that a nine millimeter pistol is pretty wimpy? You do. You think nine millimeter pistol is pretty wimpy? You wouldn't carry a nine mil pistol. You wouldn't even carry a three eighty because it's too wimpy. You got to carry forty five. Did, did you ever watch the uh, Jerry? Did you ever watch that show? Uh, uh, what is it called? Swamp People. And they go out and they, they harvest gators and they hook them and then they get them up the edge of the boat. And what do they kill them with? Uh, 22. 22s. Yep. Right? How do they do that? Uh, they just with, shoot, they they shoot them in the, the body? With their no, but where, where do they shoot them? In the head. Right, between the eyes. You know why? Because that's where their little tiny yeah, brains are. tiny peanut sized brain. Yeah, their peanut sized brain. Like a lot of people in America right now. In America. But if if you if this father and I'm not not Monday morning cornerbacking but let's face it if you're an armed american you're probably thinking dude I would have pressed my pistol to that thing's noggin if you pressed your 9 millimeter to the back of that thing's noggin put it between his eyes and press the trigger i mean you're already touching it same thing with a mountain lion i can't go into contact shooting and close quarter shooting on the radio but i'm telling you folks at least have something have something. I want you to be prepared. I want you to be armed. I want you to have the skill necessary. I want you to have the tools necessary to take care of the job. And this is an imperfect world. Sometimes bad things happen. Our ancestors knew it. They knew about wolves and lions and bears and and gators and so forth. They were here and we're here and, and we have to have dominion over them. And sometimes having dominion over them means putting a bullet into them. It's just the way it is. You know what I just realized? What? That Disney is no longer the place where people don't die. Mm. Yeah, they could not. They couldn't get away with that. They couldn't make them because it's it's public. You know, and you guys are like, what are you talking about? People never die at Disney. There, there's been an unwritten rule for what fifty years that if somebody dies at the park, they they do CPR on them or they do whatever, and they don't actually call the death until they're off Disney property. So nobody ever quote, dies at Disney World. We talked about that previously. All right, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes animals attack and sometimes, and you may be called upon to do something about it. And I hope that if that ever happens, that you're ready and prepared. That's it for Monday. We'll be back manana. And let me see, scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down my show notes. Are you on the list? We'll find out tomorrow if you're on the list or not. Make sure that you tune in. Oh, also... Hey, listen up, hippies. You listen to this show for free, right? Cost you nothing. Here's what I want you to do. Go to, well, whatever you're listening on. I don't care. I'm guessing it's on the internet, right? Not on your liver. Go to either iTunes or Podcast Republic or Stitcher. What are you listening on? I don't know. Heck, you could be listening on our mobile app. But either way, what I want you to do is I want you to go in there, leave a review. Because the left-wing progressive state puppets they're out there bullying everybody that they can bully they're they the anti-gun campaign is in full swing and one way that you can actually fight back is to show support for pro-gun stuff 
I know. It's crazy, right? So do it and tell somebody else you know to do it as well. Do what? Leave a review. Okay. Leave a review on whatever you're listening Whatever you're doing right now. Now, what are they supposed to remember? Uh, I don't know. That they're to eat it every day. That they're a beginner once or student for life. <laughs>